The 10 Attitudes for Leadership Development. Leaders are very unique people. They have a very simple distinction, and that is their thinking is different. Leaders do not think like followers. Leaders used to be followers, all of them. If you want to be an impactful personality, you have to develop certain types of thinking and perceptions that change the way you see yourself and see the world. I call this the spirit of leadership. Now there are only two animals on the planet that the creator identified himself with. I've read hundreds of books and that's my commitment. For the last 20 years, I've been reading four books a month. And that gives you an idea of how much reading I do. Because if you're going to become influenced in the world, you have to be a reader. And when I read the Bible, I was shocked to find that there are two animals that the Creator identified himself with. The first one is the eagle. And the second animal is the lion. And when I identified those two animals as his favorite to identify himself with, I recognize I better study these two animals because if he is the leader of the universe and I want to be a leader on earth, I better find out the nature of these animals and also the at attitude of these animals. And I discovered that both of them are the kings of their domain. The eagle is the king of the bird kingdom and the lion is the king of the animal kingdom. Well, I want to talk about the lion today, even though I can do a session on the eagle, which is very important. But let's talk a little bit about the lion. The lion has what I call the spirit of leadership. And this word spirit here is referring to attitude. A leader has a attitude that makes him or her different from followers. And the lion exhibits that attitude. We have to cultivate the same attitudes that the lion has because the lion apparently has been given the same attitudes that God himself identifies with and he put it in these creatures and apparently you and I are supposed to be the king of the animal kingdom the rulers of all animals so obviously we have somewhere trapped on the inside these same potential attitudes now the lion is the king of the jungle but the lion to me is a great source of encouragement to all of us. Number one, the lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. Number two, the lion is not the largest animal in the jungle. Number three, the lion is not the heaviest animal in the jungle. Number four, the lion is not the smartest animal or the most intelligent animal in the jungle. And yet, the lion is the king. You don't need to be intelligent. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to have a certain height. You don't need to have a certain weight. You don't need to have any kind of advantage. And yet you can be the leader. Now what's the main thing that shocked me with the lion is that the lion is not larger than the giraffe, bigger than the elephant, or heavier than the hippo. He's not as smart as the hyena or the snake. And yet when he shows up, they all run away. The lion, therefore, cancels all of your excuses for not becoming a leader. What makes the lion so unique? An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Because leadership can transform cowards into violent warriors. Why would a lion become the king of the jungle when he has all of those limitations. He's not the tallest, not the strongest, not the smartest, not the heaviest, not the most intelligent, but yet he runs things. The lion is the king of the jungle because of one word, attitude. The lion has a different attitude that makes every animal afraid of him. Now we don't want to lead by fear, but it does take respect for you to become a leader. When I use the word fear in the jungle, we're talking about respect. The elephant respects the lion. The hyenas respect the lion. The, the giraffes, they respect the lion. What makes these massive animals respect such a small cat? The attitude is the difference. For example, a lion will see an elephant 
and the thing that comes to his mind one word lunch now the elephant is 10 times the size of the lion probably 50 times heavier and has more power one stomp of his feet could destroy the lion but when the lion sees the elephant he doesn't look at size and weight and strength and power he looks at lunch I could eat this thing and he acts the way he thinks you see the size is not the problem the weight of the elephant is not his concern what makes him act is the way he thinks and because he thinks he can eat the, the elephant he attacks it leadership attitude now here's another amazing mystery the elephant is larger bigger stronger more powerful heavier and more intelligent and yet when the elephant sees the lion one word comes to mind eater the elephant is controlled by the way he thinks he thinks that he is lunch therefore his size his weight his power his might his his authority is a victim of the way he thinks it doesn't matter how big you are how intelligent you are how many degrees you get it's your mind that keeps you small and it doesn't matter how small you are or how un unintelligent you may seem to be or how much you don't have it's your mind that makes you the leader attitude the difference between a leader and a follower is attitude why because it is unique attitudes that distinguish leaders from followers they think differently and that's because attitudes produce certain behaviors and those behaviors stretch the leader beyond the limitations of the norm in other words it is the thinking of the person that makes them see circumstances differently how do you think write this down attitude is a product of belief this is very important to develop your leadership attitude is a product of belief you cannot have an attitude beyond your belief so your attitude comes from your belief system the lion is the king because of what he believes about himself and what he believes about the, the elephant and the giraffe he believes that they are lunch and he believes he can eat them his belief system controls the whole situation when they meet i was born in a house on four rocks two bedrooms 11 kids one mother one father one bedroom for my mom and dad the other for my seven sisters and uh, of course the boys had to find somewhere to sleep i remember sleeping on a mattress on the floor i remember sleeping one time on a mat and that sheet never kept the mosquitoes out all around me was poverty but we didn't know that because everybody was poor the only way you know you're poor is when you meet, meet a rich person and there i was sleeping on the floor wonderful family they loved me we loved one another my parents loved us we loved them we had a great family but we didn't have much and every opportunity was around me to think negative I was on the other side with alcoholics all over the place and, and I remember my mother and father would tell us things to to fix our belief system they would say you can do anything you want to do son and they said that when I was sleeping on the floor they were working on my belief system and then they taught us the Bible now I don't know about you and your belief about the Bible but the Bible made me what I am today so don't you talk bad about the Bible and if you don't believe in the Bible that's okay I'm doing just fine believe me and the Bible helped me become what I am but it was that book that checked my thinking Ephesians 3 verse 20 don't you laugh at the Bible the verse said now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above far beyond all you can ever ask think or imagine according to the power that worked within you I went from an F student to an A student in one semester because of my belief system I graduated head boy it was my what belief system no one can live beyond the limits of their belief so if you want to live beyond what you're living now you have to change your belief system leaders are born when you have the discovery of a new belief system the secret to anyone rising is what happens in their belief system your life is what you think it should be that's exactly what you are right now you are what you thought you should be and if you don't like who you are you got to change what you think you should be that's how leaders are born no amount of training in leadership skills or management methods or titles 
no amount of promotion or associations with rich people or smart people can ever substitute for the right attitude no substitute for it as a matter of fact your leadership development is determined by number one your perception of who you are number two by why you think you exist and number three these are very important your sense of significance i am giving you my secret to life right here what brought me from the floor to flying my own jet is these simple statements here you gotta first change your perception of who you are and that starts with a belief system secondly you must change your perception of why you think you exist and number three your sense of significance your perception of who you are you've got to change it and most of our perceptions are other people's concepts of us and therefore we don't have self-concept we got other concepts what is your perception of who you are and the second one why do you think you exist you got to discover that you were born for something some reason there's some purpose for your life if you don't discover that you'll always have a job and we'll bury you in an average grave with an average tombstone discover that you are important to the human race you are important to the world you are important to your universe when i had to grapple with that question it was tough because i've been taught by society like you have that you are just a social security number or some nib number or you some just kind of a, a, a worker in the system but that's not true you were born to do something very significant in the world and you have to get to the point where you believe that cultivating these attitudes are the key to becoming a leader now when attitudes of leadership is married to the ability of leadership then you become a leader you can have potential but if you don't have the belief your potential becomes a victim of your present belief remember the elephant the elephant has great power but what makes him afraid of the lion is his belief system so your mentality has to be equal to your ability for you to manifest leadership you do have the ability you were born with it to be a leader but your mentality hasn't matched it yet and that's why all of your capacity to lead is buried under your lack of belief that you can Belief is so powerful, it can make an elephant act like a sheep in the presence of a lion. You know, normally people who are insecure, whenever they meet somebody who is confident, they always call the confident arrogant. When you discover who you are, you can't help but be confident. I don't pretend, I don't try to have confidence. If you try, that means you ain't got it. It's, you're faking it. Confidence is a product of belief. What you believe about yourself determines the way you think about yourself. And the way you think about yourself is the way you behave. And you behave bold and confident and fearless because there's some things you discovered about you and about life that makes life change a perception. You can never fully carry out the mandate of leadership if you don't have the mentality of leadership. And that's what this session is about. It's about mentality. A matter of fact, integrating attitude and ad attributes and ap aptitude and altitude produces leadership. That's a lot of apps there. It means each one of them is a different experience for leaders. First of all, your attitude got to be right. Then you must marry that to attributes. That means gifts you were born with. Then you got to marry that to aptitude. That means now you got to educate and train those gifts. That's why you read and study and go to school for your at for your aptitude to be increased. And then. Your altitude means you got to change the level of associations you are in. You know, it's amazing. When you change your aptitude, you normally want to change your altitude. Leaders choose their friends based on their destination. And one of the keys to developing leadership is you have to appreciate the fact that no one is responsible for your life except you. I had to take charge of my life as a teenager. And at age 13, I discovered who I was. I became a problem to the whole family. My mom used to say to me, she'd say, you are a different boy. You are a different child. But something happened to me at age 13. I discovered myself. Different was simply meaning you don't think like the rest of the kids. That's all it means. And remember, thinking is belief system being exposed. And therefore, I married my attitude and my attributes and my aptitude changed and I began to study for a different reason. And suddenly my altitude changed. I started attracting different types of friends. And by the way, 
you know, when you, an eagle, you see the other animal that God identified himself with. I studied eagles intensely. I got a whole series on eagles because you must study to understand life. And I discussed what, what eagles, they said eagles can fly up to three to four miles in the sky. That's almost high as some jet planes. And do you know that when an eagle is flying at top flight, they say that if an eagle meets another bird in top flight, it has to be another eagle because they're the only birds that can fly at that altitude so here's a thought to take back to work with you if you keep running into pigeons and ducks and tobacco doves you are flying too low do you know what a pigeon is eagles never flock you only find them one at a time so if you keep attracting a gang of people around you at work, everybody want to bring gossip to you, you know, cackling, duck, 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 duck. you are in bad company. That's why I really want you to give yourself a big hand today, because to come here, you must be an eagle. You left the pigeons back at the office. Well, why are you going down there? Who do you think they are? They can't teach you nothing. Hey, that's a chicken talking. And they only fly when they're frightened. If you're going to be a leader, you got to be careful who you fly with. People who criticize got time for it. And that's why I ignore them. I ignore my critics because they got time for it. I'm too busy. I'm too busy succeeding. I'm giving them something to, to criticize. The greatest revenge in life they say is success. It's not ability. It's mentality that makes a leader. And that hippopotamus has power. They got ability, strength, size. They got might. They got ability. What they lack is mentality. The lion got a different mentality, so he eats them for lunch. What you think is more important than what you do. And so if you want to change, you got to work on this attitude bit. There's my conference people again. Here's my philosophy. My philosophy is this, trapped in every follower is a hidden leader. Trapped in every follower is a hidden leader. Therefore, the goal of true leadership is to release the hidden leader in the followers. If you are a true leader in your department or in your company supervisory position, if you are a true leader as a pastor or maybe as a, 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 a manager in some company, your greatest example of leadership is production of leaders. True leaders do not maintain followers, they produce leaders. True leadership focuses on producing leaders, not followers. In other words, a true leader begins to train people under their care immediately to take leadership. The capacity to lead is in every human being and leadership is like a tree trapped in a seed. And every one of you that walked through that door today is a seed that was sent to the planet to produce a tree to serve the world your fruit that's why you were born and deep inside of you is a person no one knows yet and what you've done so far is just initiation process that's why no one should cancel you yet because you ain't quite come out yet leadership manifestation requires the right environment you know a seed can be placed on a windowsill in your tiled bathroom and stay there for 50 years and the tree never come out even though the seed has a tree and a forest in it it is a victim of the environment if you can just get that seed off that windowsill and put it in soil with a little bit of water here comes the future that's the way life is you are no different from a seed I get stacks of CDs that I buy, you know, Les Brown and Tim Rev and all the others, and I put them in my car. And when I'm driving, every time I sit in my car, I'm feeding my seed constantly. Even the music you listen to, gotta be careful. It can be poison to your germination of your seed. The next time someone says they want to get to know you, ask them, are you fertilizer or a rock? There are some folks in your life right now who are very toxic. They will pollute your seed, you'll never come out. Have you noticed that people who ain't going nowhere want you to go with them? Folks who ain't doing nothing in life want you to do it with them? This is why you got to break away from your best friends sometime to become better. You outgrow people, so know when to leave. If they keep asking you questions, it's time to go. Be with people who, who you can ask questions. That's how you grow. 
True attitude is manifested in attitude. And what I mean by that is when you discover leadership, it comes out in your attitude. Attitude must be a product of your belief system. Everybody in here have attitude. Everybody. What's about the leadership attitude? There are two types of concepts. The first one is the leadership spirit and the spirit of leadership. Two different concepts. The leadership spirit is what you were born with. Your ability, you never receive it, you came with it. But your ability that you were born with is trapped by the mentality that they gave you from your, your, your culture. This is why to be great, you got to divorce yourself from your traditions and your culture. Because convention makes no room for creativity. It doesn't allow you to believe beyond the norm. Matter of fact, they want you to fit in, not stand out. So society is all worked, it's all designed for you to behave yourself. You're trained to limit yourself. Isn't it amazing that you buy a car that can travel 150 miles per hour, 180 miles per hour, and then the, the same country that sells the car to you puts up a sign, 50. No, you never thought about that, that's a problem. Yeah, see, see, Ford Motor Company makes a car to make 180, and then they make sure you only can travel 50. Society is designed to make sure you never become a leader. And that's why for you to become a leader in your workplace, you're going to have to break away from the traditions. Now, I want to warn you, when you decide to break the speed limit, all your enemies will wake up in the office. Every critic that you thought was your friend will suddenly come alive because people don't want you to leave them in their nothingness. You can't lead from behind. That's why sheep are not leaders. They follow the sheep hips in front of them. But when you are front, ain't no hip to follow. You got to design your course. And that takes boldness and risk. It takes all kinds of challenging commitment to, to decide where you want to go in life out front. Having the leadership spirit means that you are naturally created to lead. But the mentality is what wakes it up. Some of you in this room look just like that. You, you are powerful, but they got you in the bush. The social environment is just making you afraid to come out and take what's yours in life. You are the way you see yourself. Do you think you're a grasshopper? The elephant actually thinks it's a meal for a cat. The mindset of a leader is what changes his attitude toward life and himself. The spirit of leadership refers to attitudes, mentality, and mindset. And that's been the key to all great leaders. And sometimes that spirit comes forth under pressure. Many leaders in history are products of circumstances that force them to think differently. That's what makes them emerge as leaders. The spirit of leadership is a mindset. It dictates your motivation. It, re it is revealed in your response to your environment. The spirit of leadership is a perception of yourself and the world. How do you see the world? The spirit of leadership is your convictions that regulate your thoughts about yourself and people. The spirit of leadership is your personal private philosophy of life. How you think about life and yourself. The spirit of leadership is your thoughts about oneself and one's environment. It is your belief system which controls your behavior. The spirit of leadership is the source of your action which determines the response and how you interpret the world. This is very important. I see the world differently from most people because of my belief system which becomes my attitude creator. So I don't panic over nothing. I don't panic. Panic is a product of a certain belief system. And therefore, it is your mental condition. Success keeps the right company all the time. You have to nurture yourself so that you can produce the right attitudes. And nurture means to feed yourself the right information. We are what we think and we become what we continue to think. You tell your kids, go read the book, go read your homework, and then you watch TV. They're confused. Your kids will value what you value. If you value TV, they're going to hate books. If they watch you always reading books, they're going to turn the TV off because whatever mom and dad values and mom and dad are doing well, that must be what we should do too. So our kids fell in love with books. My house is full of books. I begin to run out of house because you become what you think. You cannot rise above the plane of your mental conditioning. So I got to constantly keep feeding my mentality. I have to work on it so I can work up my altitude of mentality. You, to change your life, you must change your mind. And this is why the heart of leadership is working on the way a person thinks. Here's the most important thing to write down. 
seven principles of true leadership number one true leadership is inherent in the human spirit you have to believe that first every human being possesses the capacity to be a leader whether they die as a follower is a choice number two true leadership cannot be taught it must be discovered number three true leadership is self-discovery and number four true leadership is serving your gift to the world everyone in this room was born with a specific gift some of you got two of them don't try and develop all of your gifts focus on one make it your primary gift and then refine it and then serve it to the world it is your gift that makes you valuable and serving it is your responsibility and the better you serve your gift the greater leadership you would you achieve so whoever can serve that gift more effectively they become the greatest in the group no one came to earth without a gift problem is we try to take other people's gifts and make them ours if you become an imitation you're gonna be broke you need to find your gift your strength your unique power and you need to take that and say I'm gonna become this and then serve it to the world and that's your leadership born that day we've all been taught to be employed not deployed and so they always tell you go to school get an education so you can get a job they never say stay in school so you can own a business they don't even think that way they mean they don't even, it doesn't even cross your parents don't even think that way and so you follow the convention of the community and I was I'll never forget the meeting when I went to Malaysia to speak I was speaking at the the largest Sony plant I had two days with them the first day I spoke to all the managers all the CEOs I was the the speaker to train them there was Chinese and Japanese and Singaporeans all these folks were there in Malaysia working for Sony and I had to do training there for management development and leadership training for the whole day the third day the president of that particular firm called me up and he says our CEOs and our executives are so impressed by you we want to take you for lunch we want to talk to you some more and they were picking my brain man they wanted they were taking notes asking me questions keep writing stuff writing stuff and and I, all of a sudden it hit me you know wait a minute all these guys are millionaires man every Chinaman I know owns a business and here I am in the heart of Asia where they come from and I said sir pardon me I have a question that I need you to answer and they looked at me I said tell me how come everywhere you are going, no matter where it is, you go to the lowest ghetto in the heart of the township and you end up owning a business? Can you tell me what is your secret? And they looked at each other and they laughed. And then the president said to me, he said, well, you know, we've been noticing that ourselves. We have concluded based on our assessment that whenever you go into a community, the first thing you look for is a job he says when we come into any community the first thing we look for is a business he said it's attitude they don't even look for a job they don't even think about employment they think deployment as a man thinking they become so I said to the guy I said excuse me so when you go into a, a, a town any any country so what do you do until you get a business? He says, any employment we have is always temporary. We only want enough money to start a business. That's all mentality. Number six, true leadership is self-manifestation. You become a leader when you discover who you are and decide to become it. True leadership is self-manifestation. Your leadership is not ahead of you. It's trapped within you. You are so great, it's amazing. But the environment won't allow you to become it. Sometimes our past can hold us back. Mentality just don't allow you to to step out and take a risk. What you're doing now, it's not what you could do. Whatever you're impressed with, God's disappointed in. Stop waiting for everything to show up before you start. Every leader, I tell you the truth, every leader ain't know what they doing. Me included, we don't know what we're doing. We just say, I got this idea, I'm gonna go for it. And for heaven's sake, believe me, we ain't got no money. What I mean is for our projects. Because you are not a leader unless you're doing something you cannot pay for. I say, you, you are not a leader unless you are doing something you cannot pay for. Leadership demands that you got to take risks. Number seven, leadership is self-exposure. When you expose your true self, get ready. People won't understand you, but go for it. Let us meet you before you die. Not the one the culture made. Not the one society produced. The one that's on the inside that we have yet to meet. The true self. 
This is why I keep telling people you got to die empty. And I want to give you this, what I call the five questions of life that you have to answer to become a leader. Number one, who am I? Number two, where am I from? Number three, why am I here? Number four, what can I do? And number five, where am I going? These are the most important questions in life and until you answer them, you will always be a follower. Who am I has to do with identity. You got to discover who you are apart from 6.7 billion people. Number two, where am I from has to do with your heritage. And I'm not talking about your ethnicity because your ethnic heritage is so confusing. Don't try to find yourself by going back in your ethnicity. You'll never find out where you're from. Why am I here is a question of purpose. You got to discover why you were sent to the planet. Where am I going is a, is a question of destiny. And what can I do is a question of potential. And therefore, when you discover these answers, you've discovered your leadership. I know who I am. I didn't always, but I found out who I was. And secondly, I know where I came from. And I didn't come from the Bahamas. I didn't come from Africa, because both of them are limiting. All cultures limit you. I had to come from something greater. My greatest mentor in history in my life is Jesus Christ. And one time they asked him, where are you from? You know what his answer was? He didn't say I came from Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, and had friends in Capernaum. His answer was, I came down from heaven. They say, they said, no, 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 we know your mother, she's Mary, and your daddy, Joe. He says, no, I came down from heaven. He refused to have his heritage limited to earth, and so am I. Me, I came through Bain Town. I didn't come from Bain Town. I came through the Bahamas. I didn't come from the Bahamas. Wherever you came from can limit you or give you unlimited thinking. I said, the reason why they call Africa Mother Africa is because you never get your heritage from your mother. That's why you carry your father's name. The seed of your identity comes from your father. I came down from my father through the mother. That makes me limitless. I'm just like my daddy. All things are awesome with my father. True leadership is not a method nor a technique. True leadership is an attitude. When I discovered that I came out of God, not out of the Bahamas, suddenly the Bahamas became too small for me. So today we have effects in 90 countries right from this island because the mentality that was developed here goes beyond this entire region. Don't let where you came from physically trap you. Don't let your ethnic heritage become your graveyard. Stop being black and white and, and yellow and stuff. Forget that stuff. That's too, that's too limiting. Become like your father. Be a man. It's a spirit being. There's no limit. Everything you know is not all there is to know. Beliefs and convictions of a leader can regulate the nature of their leadership. And therefore, the source of beliefs is the perception of your truth. What is truth to you determines what you do with your life. Whatever you think is truth, that's how you're going to live. That's why it's important to keep getting information.